What's happening? This is John Sue, just slabber. We're joined today by a very special guest, big Tommy McCarthy. Oh, it's good to have you on, my brother. Thanks for having me. Yeah, oh, it's a fucking pleasure. So, um, you're from Belfast. And you're a world champion boxer. Well, European. Well, that's still it's the same. World. It's Listen, part of the world. It is part of European the world. European champion of the world. European <laughs> champion of the world. And what weight class was cruiser. it? Cruiser. Cruiser weight. Yeah. Sick, bro. And um, and you're from Belfast then? Yep, from the, from the Wild West. From the Wild, Wild West. LDK. Yes, bro. <laughs> now, it's good to have you on, my bro. It is indeed. So fucking, I want to know, um, like, what did you, you grew up your whole life in Belfast? You know, I was actually um, born in London. Born in London? Born in London and um, lived. So my daddy's from here, from from Lanadoon as well and he was in England working. He met my mother. So my mother said it's Jamaican. I was born in London and then from I was born back and forward from they got there six weeks, they got brought back to Belfast, they get christened and then my parents broke up because they were young when they had me. So right. it's this usual story, you know young people break up. My daddy came home so then it's back and forward for the early stages and then my mummy passed away. So then I came here full time then to live with my grandparents up in Nanadon. And then I was just travelling back to London, you know, like on school holidays and that because yeah. the bulk of my family live there. My grandparents live there still my In London. In London. All my aunties. Where are in London? Uh North and East London. And then like yeah. I have loads of family in South London as well. But Wow. It's uh Mostly north and east. And then where did you go to school here or there? Well, I went to I went to nursery in London. I went to think people here don't really. So in England they have reception, but they don't have reception here. So yes, that's reception is like P one. I know, of course, because yeah. I I grew up in England, so yeah, right. Meant... So I went to yeah, nursery and seven. reception. Yeah, and um, I think it was maybe. P one, P two, and then it came here. So I went to I went to a couple of years of school over. There. And then you came here then to and, school. Yeah, and then I went. Uh, and uh, how old were you when your mum died then? I was just just before I turned eight. Oh. Yeah. And the, like, because it's a young age then, did it not really uh, like? Yeah, like sink in. Well, yeah. it was easier to to adapt because you know I'm still you know, in my early phases of life, but I feel, you know, f what did I say, from one to six is when all your, of course. everything yeah, is, everything like, that's like the person you're who you're yeah. going to become, so, um, and I, I feel that people, children are always closer to their mother, say, their family, than their, Obviously, the, yeah. always, no, like, yeah. on the whole, but because I was so young, you know, it was exciting, you know, like I'm moving into my grandlies, like my my Irish grandlies, yes. and I had all my friends who were my friends that I would see, you know, just when, when you're around yeah, holiday. So the, and they would always be like, so it's like your holiday, holiday yeah. Turning so into it was, real life. yeah, yes. So it was you were excited. It was as well, exciting, and, and and a good thing as well. People always, oh, it must have been a cultural shock for you, and all, but it wasn't because I'd been there from when I was yeah, born, yes, so yeah. I knew everyone. And everyone were, knew yeah, me, yeah, and and. When you're young, kids don't see any differences. They, they if don't. you're disabled, what colour you are, or yeah. the kids don't give a shit about it. So yeah. it wasn't like a big thing. Like, oh man, Tommy's fucking black, or he's from yeah. black. It was just like everyone was just, it was just good vibes and Obvious. you know, like innocent. And um, so, yeah, it was and good. how old were you then when you moved here properly? Then so it's it's um. So I was here for the summer holidays. Yes. So uh, it was the day that I was going, the day before I was flying back to London to go to start school, you know, after the summer holidays. Yeah. My mother passed away. So that day, Fucking like hell. all my family were all out and we went to the Falls Park, you know, like for like, Tommy's going back to London for a while. And you no, know, it was like a, a sad day you no know, for me to be going back cause, uh, and then when I got back to my grannies the word had come in that 
that uh, my mom had passed. So, like, literally, that moment, it was like, fuck, it looks like I'm going to be living here now because my daddy lives here. Yeah. But... They, and have you done any boxing or anything at this nah, stage? Nah, um... Oh, I do, you know what I was doing? Judo. <laughs> like, seven, seven. Uh, under friggin' sevens. Yeah. And, um... And we're, we're in London In London. Time? Yeah. But all my family is a music family. Right. So, mm. like, oh, they're all singers in a church family. Right. So my my granda on my mommy's side is, like, uh... He's, like, the leader of a, a Pentecostal church. Sad. He's, um... What do you call it? He's a pastor, like, but he's the you know, the top pastor in the church. Yeah, like so the head pastor. All, like my family, the big gospel singing. So wow. it was all music. So Melissa, you know, like, I was, boxing was, like, wasn't really on the agenda. Yeah. And that, it was never, because even then, after that, after a few years, when I was like nine or ten, I started playing guitar and like everything was all music for me. Wow. Like I was a, I am a music man, really more than a sports man. Yes. But uh, that's and it's a, and all that, what type of music is your favorite? See, to be honest, my f- ultimate favorite is gospel music. I love gospel, like, <laughs> and wow. people will be weird, but obviously that's from being a kid, and yeah, you know course. that's, and um, I love R and B. You know Sam Cook. Yeah, yeah. Sam Cooke, he was a, he was like a gospel singer. Yeah, before. and most most of the black soul singers all come out of the church. Oh God, so, yeah. black music from you know from gospel to R and B to hip hop to soul, like I would love it all. Yeah, like, and reggae, obviously, um, old school reggae, the you know dance hall. All in. Yeah, man. Well, it's, yeah. That's the same as me, but that's what I grew up on, listening to all of that, you know. But, um, so, did you grow up in the church then? And, and well, yeah, and my family's still in the church now, so, um, I would have went, like, my, my mommy wasn't born again, but all her sisters were. Yeah. So, I, my mom used to send me to church with my cousins, you know, because yeah, like, yeah, your cousins yeah. are your, yeah. Your first friend, so I, and I used to love going. I still do love going yeah. to church. Um, like when I'm when I'm in London, and uh, so I would have went to church, and I just loved it. I loved the singing. You know, my my grandmother, as he passed away at the end of last year, and her funeral was in January. Yeah, and uh, so I went away from my kids and it, and my kids obviously have grew up here. They've been to London loads of times, but they'd never been the a black funeral. So yeah. I, I said on the way to the, to the church, I was like, Red kids, he's ready for two hours of church here. And they're like, fuck, two hours? Are you yeah. serious? But then yeah. when we got in, they were like, they didn't want it at the end because it's I just know. pure singing Bro, and I like good exactly names. Even though it was a funeral, but it was like, it was I funny. know, I know about them churches because I, like, I went to school in Moss Side, which is like a black yeah. area. Do you know what? Just... I used to be based in Moss Side for two years. Did you, well, I, cause champs big, camp, shout out yes, champs camp. I know champs as well. Yeah. It's on. It was on Princess Hume High Road, Street or yeah. something. Yeah, just off um, Hume High Street, wasn't it? It's right. Well, it's right on on the road. Yes. Yeah, I do know where it is. Just off Princess yeah, Road, yeah. Melton. Bro, yeah. is that where you were from? Yeah. Well, I was there for two years. I loved it over there. Like, but sorry, I can't in, go ahead. Nah, but I loved that. I didn't yeah, know that yeah. you were based in Manchester yeah. as well. Like, you know, but um, I went to school there in Trinity and um, one of my best mates then, he told me to go to his church and it was like a black Pentecostal church. Yeah. And I went with my dad and um, I brought my dad in and I remember thinking, this is nuts because <laughs> they were singing for about, yeah. I don't know, I think a few churches had all come together, but they're singing. Yeah. They just sang for about two hours straight, it's bro. It's great, like, it's it very was, fun, man. It was mad, bro. It was mad. So, it's like, you know, so I would have uh, grew up, like, my, like, as a Catholic, and Catholic mass, like, yeah. you're in and out. It's like half an hour. I remember when I was a kid, it used to be an hour, and then it's shortened it down to 45 minutes, and then that's half an hour. Like, like, fuck, get in. Yeah. It's so boring, and... Like, there's, there's no vibes at all, but know. you go to, like, black shirts, it's Yeah, just I noticed brilliant. that, like, it's because, you see, like, uh, I don't know, the, the Catholic thing, it's all very, like, um, it's, like, from the Roman, the yeah. Roman Empire, and it's all very, like, strict and, you know, steeped in yeah. tradition, and it's, like, madness, you know? It's the same with, like, the Church of Ireland. You wouldn't even know the difference, uh, and exactly. that's a Protestant yeah, church. 
and yeah, it's pretty much identical to yeah. the Catholic. I remember going to Church of Ireland, Church of Ireland, and kneel down and all, and them giving you the wee weird wafer. Yeah, you know, you were there thinking, what the fuck? And I says, are we in a Catholic church now, Dad? And he says, no, this is like Church of England, yeah, Church, church of, Ireland. of Ireland. And I was thinking, this is, oh, fuck, you know, it's yeah. madness. Whereas the, the the Pentecostal, like, you know, the black churches and all, it's a lot more, like, um, lively. Yeah. And, like, full of life, you know what I mean? But again, I'm not into all the, like, the a lot of the, you know, what do you call that? It's like a prosperity teachings. Have you seen mm. them preachers? Big. See, like I said, like, fucking my family's heavy church family, but I'm a believer in God and yeah. the higher power, but I wouldn't say I'm a Christian. Yeah, of course. I'm not a Catholic, you know, and over here, it's it's a different kind of thing, you know, like you're a Catholic or a Protestant, like, it's almost like culturally I'm a Catholic, you no, know, like all them traditions. Yes. But... I don't believe none of that shit that's yeah. going on in the Catholic Church. And but it's like funny I, because... I, I don't like it. Like, yeah, like the Protestant Catholic thing, I always laugh at it because that is a tag, you know, that is to do with, like, um, Unionist or Yeah, that's what it is. Unionist or Nationalist or Loyalist yeah. or Republican. Yeah. So, like... But as far as um, the religion mm. is concerned, I think even I said it before, I think it's hilarious, you know, Protestant Church, the way it's like a protest of the Catholic yeah. Church. And so, re really... I would be more a Protestant, no, yes. like in your mentally, theology, yeah. But like, you know, <laughs> just culture. Like I, I get married in the Catholic Church. I was christened in the Catholic Church. All my kids were christened. Made a confirmation, communion, all the friggin' <laughs> sacraments and all yeah. that shit. But you know, I just like I'm happy for my kids to do that, and was happy to get married in, in the Catholic Church just for tradition. You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah, I know. It's just because it's you know, like they don't, then yeah. it's something to look back on. No, yeah, but I'm definitely not a Catholic. Yeah, I don't. Um, I wouldn't subscribe to any of it. Like I said, I believe in God, definitely do. But um, my dad was a, is a preacher, and he'd go into loads of churches, you know, and I seen a lot of like you know, fakery and mm. corruption in the churches. Is your dad a big time preaching? Yeah. What's his name? Or do you dad, not want to yeah, say? Well, I'll say it proudly, sure. Um, mm -hmm. I made music about him as well. My album, The Troubles, the album yeah, that I yeah. give you, one of the songs on there is called A Cause Worth Living For, and that's the name of my dad's book. Right. My dad's called David Packy Hamilton. David Packy Hamilton? Yeah. He, he might know my grandma. Because my grandma was, like, been over here a few times as well. No, there, there have been churches bring in no, like other ministers are coming. Right. Like on the Reuben, Reuben Edwards, Ruben the Bishop R. L. Edwards. I wonder. My he was no. My mate's Edwards as well. My mate I was talking about. You know who I went to the In church Manchester? with. Yeah, he's called Alonso Edwards. You know. Probably related. No, because yeah, my grandma has family up in Manchester too. So yeah, you they're know. big. They're family. And Jamaica is such a small place, thick. So it's what part of Jamaica are you from? Uh, Kingston, well, my granddad's from Trans Town, like, Sick. and then my granny's from Spanish Town. So, most yeah. of my family now are in Spanish Town, I remember. But Spanish Town, yeah, yeah. my good old chronics. Yeah, from yeah. Spanish Town, oh, yeah. he's one of my favorites, bro. Yeah, he's the, he is the one, he is the king. As I said, he's yeah. like a modern day Bob Marley or something, definitely. He's powerful, definitely. bro, powerful. But yeah, man, so you've got um, roots in Kingston and Spanish, Spanish Town. Town, so like, you see. Like my cousins, they were like my second cousins out in Spanish town. Yeah. So I wouldn't know all of them that much, sick, but I know a couple of them. Yeah. So, but I'm claiming so, them, they're claiming me as well. So. Yeah, man, that's gangster, bro. <laughs> that's, some, that's some mix to be half Jamaican, half Irish, bro. Well, do you know what? It, people say it, but it's so similar to cultures, you know, cool. and I think it's two island nations so it's the island mentalities yeah. they say people from islands are more mad but it's like when I got married then all you know my mummy said the family all came here and they were like they're just like yeah. white Jamaicans they're like yeah, white yardies and all like everything and it's the same you know what the Irish people are famous for the stereotypes a lot of drinking a lot of fighting yeah. sound but aggressive yeah you know, and it's like Jamaicans, it's the exact same. Yeah, it is. All, all, all the one. Like, and that's why I always think, you know, when you go to places like England, like London or Manchester, they're all, you always see Jamaicans and Irish people together. Yeah, it's true. Well, that's what happened with me. When I was in Manchester, I felt 
safest with like my Jamaican yeah, mates. You can know? Relate with them. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm not doing that because at the time as well, you know, the the IRA blew up the Arndale, and yeah. so that were like the terrorists of the yeah, day. Yeah. You know what I mean? But my all my mates like from my side, no, they were like, nah, bro, no, you're chilling yeah. with us. You remember I got into rap as well. Because you know? yeah, then, like when I went to more safe, the what happened was I'll tell you how I ended up with her. So I was training for a big fight and. Sam Head, shout out Sam Head, he came over to spar with me and he was with, is there here, Ansley Bingham? He's like a, a legendary boxer from Mall State, so he was the cult channel and they come over to spar and we had fucking great work, so I'll come over next week to your gym to spar. So I went over and um for a week in, excuse me, in Tamps Camp with Mall State and then Everything was great and it got on really well with, with Anzi Bingham. So I was like, fuck it, I'm going to come and train me if you, yeah. if you want me. So he was like, yeah, come on over, you're more than welcome. So obviously I had heard of Moss Said because it's a yeah. like, notorious place, but I didn't know like too much about it. So I was like, fuck if I'm going over here, let me see what's going on. Yeah. So I started watching YouTube documentaries and it was like, they're just shooting. Everyone was just getting shot yeah. and killed. And I was like, what the fuck? And the phone was me, bingo. What the fuck are saying? It's mental over here. And he was like, no, don't worry. If you're not in the gangs, nobody's going to trouble you. Yeah. And um, I went over and I, it was just... What year was this? 2017, remember? I went. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I think it had sort of... It had all, like, yeah, he said it was all, like, yeah. he says that's all old. Yeah. And he says it's not, like, anymore in his teens. But so I went and then, and friggin', you know, usually when I meet people and I say, where are you from? I say, Belfast or Ireland. They're like shocked and all like, but when I got to the gym and the guys were going, where are you from? And I was going, Belfast. Oh, my mom's there. So, no, like all the, all the black people were like yeah. Jamaican descent. Yeah, all the white course. people were Irish descent. All the mixed yeah. race people were the same yeah, as me, yeah, yeah, Irish yeah. Jamaican. Yeah. And I was just like, fuck, this is my spiritual course. home. Like yeah. <laughs> everyone, even like the black guys was like, oh yeah, my granny's from Ireland. And like oh, everyone that I was like, it wasn't weird me being yeah, a black course. Irish guy. Yeah. And then everyone was so sound. Like, I think Manchester has, like, a Belfast kind of atmosphere. Like, yeah. everyone's nice. No, I know what you're saying. Like, you know, like, if you walk down the street, you don't know people to go, you're right? And fucking, no, like, they'll yeah. acknowledge it. Whereas in yeah, London, London or somewhere, they just... Talk. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that on the, on the tube or something, and then they wouldn't give you a yeah, time of day. Yeah. Up north, it definitely yeah. has got that. And it's the same with the even... Like, I noticed that about Manchester, like the red brick and all. It's just yeah. it's something it's similar. Great, like, even, and like, Moss said, you know, is the ghetto and notorious, yeah. like, I don't even want to say, like, the ghetto, again, like, the Ragos way, but it's no, like but the it hood, the ghetto, you know what I mean? It was the ghetto. And um, I was there and I was like, fuck, I, I want to live here. I, gonna, yeah, I don't want to move my whole family here because, like, it was so, it was so brilliant. Bro, I loved it and there. Everyone's... And I felt always, um, like you said, out of everywhere. It was funny because it was known as the ghetto, but out of everywhere in Manchester, and I always felt safest there. Yeah. And not only that, I loved the fucking food, bro. Yeah. The food was the it best. Was on really. like, so we used to train, and um, so we were training in Tamps Camp, and then after training, go down, Where and we... a couple of doors down was, um, it's to make them food shop, Sasses. I don't even know if it's called Sasses, but the mom was called Sasa. Yeah, we used yeah, to go Sasa. in and get and get her get get her lunch and it was like that was the daily routine. It was fucking great. Sick, bro. Yeah, there was um and then just across the street as well, I remember they'd set up like an African Yeah. An African like um food shop as well. Yeah. An African restaurant. They'd done the jalafi rice yeah. and all. But do you know what? I've I've only had African food one time, and I was in India. <laughs> I was over to come have games, yeah? so they had up stalls, you no, know, like the suit everyone know yeah. from different yeah, parts. So yeah, there was yeah. like African stall, uh, <laughs> European stall, Indian stall, and so my experience of African food was in India. It was probably cooked by, well, obviously cooked by Indians. It was yeah. nice, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> sickness. But um, yeah, no, Ma said was that was I loved it. I still. Like Manchester is my favorite place. I've like I would love. I, was, I was probably would still live there, eh? It's I love funny. Manchester. Like um, it's funny because, like I said, I spent most of my life there. We moved like in '96, and then I lived there. 
like most of my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? I went all like finished the last two years of primary school or then in, I went in Montez, Yeah, and then I done all the like I got school? yeah, I got kicked out of high school. I went to Trinity, which was in like Hume, mm -hmm. Moss Side. Yeah, like, yeah. And then I got kicked out of there and then I went to Moss Side Powerhouse. And that was right in the in the And you kept your accent the whole time and So it was weird, it didn't really like it was funny when we moved, me and my brother, like I said then, you know. It was weird for us because we were from a Protestant background, yeah. and then. So you over at the Den Curve. So no, well they, they sort of did at that time, like yeah. it says, because we moved over, um, and we had an Irish accent. So they all said, "You're Irish. You yeah. use your Irish, aren't you?" Trying but at explain. the time, yeah, and we were saying we're not Irish and all, like no, we're British, and they're like for about a year, like it was mad trying yeah. to explain. Then they ended up. My brother's nickname's Irish, <laughs> and then it even got shortened to Rish. <laughs> <laughs> they just called him Rish. That's what his nickname was. I was called Irish Johnny. Oh. You know, we got about then. And like I said, in Gordon, I lived in Gordon. It's like, you know, Meeks Manny. Yeah. That's where he's from. This yeah. like Shameless. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's where it's filmed there. But um, that was a lot like a white area. So that's where I would have a bit more with the heard my accent. Yeah. No, you met me where I was in Moss Side, humor area. It's a lot of more. And yeah. Yeah, they were all very like, you know, so that's how I got into hip hop and everything and the food and the culture and everything. And yeah. I felt like, like safe there even like I, when I got older then I lived in um, Hume for like two years you know yeah. my brother like lived there as well yeah. and all so that. like in, in the gym as well it was like people from Hume like no like the surrounding yeah. area and, the, and it was great it was all like we would train at 12 o'clock and the gym was always packed you no know, like yeah, we keep yeah. fillers so you know like where, where, where else would these people be in the gym? So I was like, no, you go in, the phones are all just sitting on the, on the yeah, bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But everyone was just so sound. Like, Gosh. everyone was, it was, I loved it over. Nah, definitely. How long were you there for? Two years? Two years. And then, obviously, back and forward. But at the start, I was staying with my mate. I had to share him out, Liam Burke. I was staying up in Altrincham, which is the group. Yeah, I'm Altrincham, of but course. Bingo used to pick me up. I was sleeping on his sofa. And then, um... And I ended up going into like a house show around Moss Side. So I was staying in a house with, um, there was actually a guy, same as you, from here, but moved to Manchester as a kid yeah. when he was like eight. But his, his uncles, one of his uncles, done the, was one of the Birmingham Six. Yes, whoa. So yeah. he was saying, like, exactly what you're saying, they were getting a hard time, like you're Harry Snare. So he had a full Manchester accent. He yes. said, like, they tried so you no know, him and his brothers you know when they were kids to lose their Irish accent because yeah. they were getting tortured. It's weird now my accent because it's a bit like my girlfriend even last when I go to Spain I'd start talking now uh, I talk about the Spanish you know what I'm saying bro because we always like when in Rome do what the yeah, Romans do yeah. and then. Like, it's definitely a part of me now, the Manchester accent, because when we'd go out, it'd be tough. It was funny, my wee sister, she was born in Wales. We moved to Wales for two years. Um, that's where I started boxing. So when, before you went to Manchester? Before we went to Manchester, so we left, like, Rathcoole in, like, 94, and then we moved to Swansea, Wales. Yeah. And um, that's where my dad bought me the boxing chain. Right. And we started training with um, Enzo Macanarelli. You know him? Yeah, yeah. And um, I was only kids, like, you know, yeah. and we were training with his dad. And we loved the boxing and all then, you know. And then two years later, we moved to we Manchester. To Manchester yeah. but, um, but I loved Wales as well. And then, like, when we lived in Wales... We would um, talk a little bit Welsh, yeah. guys, you know, that type of thing. And then like, we had that yeah, wee yeah. accent, and then when we got to Manchester, so it was just, just a whole big yeah. cocktail but of the, accents. Yeah, and then because I got into rap and all, like, um, I, I thought I'll, uh, a lot of my rap was all, like, um, political, or not political, but more like... Conscious rap? Yeah, conscious yeah. shit, you know, and I'd go raw, but I would talk a lot Manchester in it. Mm. But then... I thought, oh, I'm going to talk about my roots, my Irish yeah. roots and all. So I wrote a song about growing up in Belfast. And then I thought, right, I'm going to make, like, I'll start making more yeah. of that. And then that's how the Troubles came about then. Yeah. And it took me, like, seven years to make the Troubles album. And like I said, it was like a, it's like an audio autobiography of my family tree, mm. you know, and I talk about, like, my great-granda was a Republican from down south. And mm. then he met my great-granny. It's always a woman always turning. Yeah, of <laughs> <laughs> My wife, uh, that's the same. Her, 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 her grandma was a Protestant. Sick. Met um, a girl, her granny from down south, and then so he 
became a cat again, the Mario. Yeah, damn right as well. Like, listen, if I find a good girl, it's just, I just gotta <laughs> say, yeah, but he'll marry. Let's get this going. <laughs> no, it's true, bro. But, um, no, no, so the album, though, I basically sh show like how there was a full circle, you know what I mean? Mm. And, um, like, my, my, my great granny then, she was pregnant with my granda, and, um, he left then he had to leave you with me and then she married like into a Protestant family then right. and he despised my granda and then my granda ended up joining the British army oh, you know the escape yeah, like his yeah, evil yeah, Protestant yeah. stepdad <laughs> then after that then my dad and then when my dad was born he became a UVF this could club, be a fucking a movie uh, it should be a movie well it's the album it's like a movie yeah. it took me seven years to like you know construct it all and um, and it was funny because then my dad was a UVF man and fought for the queen and country and thought and he was that British. way he became a, a, a pastor in once he turned his back on yeah well life. yeah because he then when he was in jail then he had a revelation of god that changed his life and he realized like he you know he he wasn't british or nothing or he just was yeah. a man of god and he was yeah. will, willing to die for his beliefs you know it's funny because um he, that's what the song in the book is called the cause worth living mm. for because he was willing to die you know, for yeah, what he for, believed for, in. Yeah, yeah. But now he, he, there was a cause that he thought there was worth living for mm, this, you know, which mm. was like the good news, you know. So it's funny because I'm not really, I wouldn't say I'm a Christian, but I do know there's a God, yeah. you know. Yeah, and I would be the <laughs> same. Like, I have strong faith in God and, you know, whatever you want to call it, the universe or yeah. higher power or anything, whatever you want to call it, like, I believe in God. And I just... uh I love fuck. Like I always say, like if if I went to like listening to gospel music would make you want to give your life to God. Will yeah, make me because yeah. I love it that much. But it's just yeah, I know what the you the, mean. the the um man man like humans fucking imprint and influence. That's what I'm looking for. The human influence on it kind of corrupts it a little bit. So like a man. Uh, where I say a man wrote the Bible, a man is teaching you what his interpretation is of it and all. So, like, I don't want to listen to a man as who's not perfect. You know yeah, I mean? of course. Have you read the Bible? Nah. So that's the thing as well. Like, I, I, I won't even, like, say, oh, the Bible's not, like, trying to down or anything because yeah, I haven't read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, but I just, I don't want somebody else is interpretation the you know yeah. like especially yeah, someone who's not pure of heart that's why yeah. my grandma and I'm, I'm not being biased because it's my grandma but he's the only person i've ever known who lives it walks it talks it lives it did a fucking did a thing and uh, me and him would be really tight like and yeah. on the phone and yeah, uh, I said that to him. Like I wouldn't want anyone else. I don't trust anyone else to tell me anything about religion apart from you. So, because uh, he was that. saying to me, like, oh, I can see, I, I can see that you're waiting for the time to give your life to Christ. It's uh, called uh, I'm not, I'm not, let's see what happens. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't, know. I won't pull away. Like I wouldn't say I'm not, but I just, I think live right, and you know. Don't try and harm anyone, and don't try and harm yourself too. I know. I love that, bro. You're, who's that? Your granda? Yeah, my granda. Absolutely. He sounds like a warrior, bro. He does. He sounds like my dad. My dad, like I said, he was a you know he was a terrorist and all that. But when I was born, I just knew him as a a man of God, yeah. and he's never faltered like ever. Yeah, you yeah. with me? And it's been like I think he said. How did you feel man. like? You said he was a terrorist. How yeah. would your dad feel about you calling him a terrorist? Did well, he, he look at himself yeah, as no, a terrorist? No, or? an ex-terrorist. Because he oh, was, no. you know, it was a terrorist. Like like I said, listen, if you inflict terror upon someone, you know what I mean? I don't care if you think it's a freedom fighter or whatever, yeah. you'd still, that's what you're doing. You with yeah. me? If you're planting bombs, you know, doing armed robberies, yeah. you know, <laughs> that's pretty, yeah, wearing yeah. balaclavas and all that. That was what they were called, terrorists. And it's funny because... You know, Muslim like you know they would like to make out like after nine eleven, like they were the first ones to be called terrorists. They weren't. No, there was no, IRA no, terrorists no. and UVF terrorists long before that. Before them, and, and that's what they were. You know, and, and like I said, paramilitaries. You know, that's what they were called terrorists. Mm. But um, when he went from that to being a Christian, like he's never faltered. He's never changed. Yeah. 
You know, he's just stayed. So like, you have to respect it. You know, someone who can stay true. And I've seen him. I've seen him, bro. My dad was a pastor of a church, and you know, he's seen corruption in the church and tried to speak out upon it. And they were like, "Nah, these guys like I'm pay up and all. Yeah. They, they don't be speaking out." My dad says, "Nah, I'm quitting then." And all. Yeah. I've seen him like do militant shit yeah, where I just thought this guy's righteous for God he doesn't yeah. care about his status doesn't care about any of that nonsense or bullshit it's about your integrity and staying militant so he mm -hmm. just said nah I'd cut it off Yeah, you know and like you said about your granda you know even though I would always question about that theologically because I have read the Bible mm. I've studied it and I've studied like the Quran and Buddhism and Taoism yeah. and that I like studied a lot of different religions but what one was the heck's the best? I don't know. Um, I, I definitely. No, nah, I don't think it is one and the same. Like, I don't. I think. And I think there's some religions that are like. would come from a good place and some that wouldn't come from a good place, mm. you know? And um, and then I think all religions as well, maybe. I think all religions are sort of pointing to the same God, which is the devil, you know, mm. uh, in terms of like um, their traditions, especially like Catholicism and like. It's all drenched in like it's dark. It's very dark, yeah. you know. I think it's like I remember studying about um, Satanism, and in, or, in, in order to become a satanic priest, you first have to become a Catholic priest. Do you? Yeah, and it makes total sense. I was talking about um, in the seventies. There was a man called Alberto Rivera, and he was like a Catholic priest, and he he, he exposed it. Then he came out and you know spoke against yeah. it. There was like monasteries and nunneries, and underneath them there was catacombs, and the 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 priests and the nuns would come and have sex, and then the the nuns would go on a nine month silence retreat. But really, they were pregnant, <laughs> and then when they had the kids, laugh. when, know, so when they had the kids, then they, they went down and like sacrificed them. And in these catacombs in the seventies, the police went down and found them. There was like hundreds of fucking child skeletons fucking and shit. Hell. So it's all very, very dark shit. You with me, bro? Yeah. And I do know that, like especially all the um, you, you like, what do you think about the? Do you believe in like the Illuminati or any of that? Well, Illuminati. It's like the proper popular term in it. I do believe that there is, you know, the the elite who's like controlling yeah. the narrative of stuff. But I don't know what do you call it? some you could call that Illuminati or whatever. But I do believe there is someone Do you think secret societies are controlling the world? Oh, for sure. Hundred percent. And sure. the media and the music and everything that they pump yeah. into us. It's yeah. all designed to keep it as a level. It's like, a, you know, I was watching it, bro, as well, like all of these fucking singers nowadays. It's weird to me. Chronix should be one of the biggest artists yeah. in the world. But like it's I not, say, like, you know? Who is, like, allowing these people to like, become big? Because, you know, I say I'm fucking from Jamaican heritage, so I would listen to, you know, reggae music a lot, and then... There's so many, you know, artists who are just, you know, out of this world. As good as Bob Marley. Yeah. Maybe not as good as Bob Marley, but make as, you know, yeah. like yeah, sweet music. And Bob Marley is 100% uh, probably one of the best humans that ever walked earth. You no, know? like, what's you, what's you hear of him? <laughs> yeah. But, like, Bob Marley, Sean Paul, they're the two biggest musical exports. And it's like, they're the two... The two light skinned guys. Yeah. Why aren't the dark skinned Jamaicans who are making as you know great yeah. music? And like I'm a light skinned guy myself, so yeah. but I was like, that's obviously a thing. Like they're just someone's controlling it. We'll open the door for these Jamaicans that are acceptable. Yeah. But Chronics, yeah. who is making as good a music as exactly. Bob Marley, is like no, you yeah. just stay up. Uh. And it's weird to talk about that because like you see it over in Ireland here and all, all the girls are obsessed with fake tan. No. They all want to like they're going cook and themselves. Over there, they're all bleaching, they're all bleaching skin, their yeah. fucking skin, no, no. bro. That's no, scary, no. that. But that's scary, bro. And imagine bleaching your skin like to try and no, no. you know what I mean. It's all just like what's trendy and in, in where but you're it, living in it, yeah. like you know. Friggin' people here in in Ireland and in, in England too, they're getting, you know, the, the talent in Jackson's are flattered in the sunbeds. People uh -huh. want to get as dark yeah, as they I can. Know. And then, you know, in Jamaica, they're bleaching. I think that, uh, I was reading a thing in India as well. Or do it, like all 
to be dark in a different part of the world isn't exactly. what they look that they're going it's for. It's fucking mental, bro. Like I said, when it's human nature, I suppose. When you're young, you want to be old. When you're old, you want to be young. Yeah. When you're dark, you want to be light. When you're yeah. light, you want to be yeah. dark. It's fucking mental. Bro. And nowadays, they're fucking turning into fucking, oh, if you're a man, you can be a woman. You know what I mean? It's just all a thought. Like, yeah. so I was going to talk about the transgender thing. What do you think of that in boxing as well? Like, imagine you decided now to become a woman. Do you think as a, as a champion, European champion boxer, that you made, could just... That made do it. You know what I mean? You should do it. You, bro, you, you <laughs> fucking do it. Yeah. Yeah, well, Girl, bro. probably still not wearing boxing. Like, like, <laughs> 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 My only joke. Uh, Do you know what I mean? No, that's no, fucking yeah, mental. I just think, you know, with a trans issue, it's not even an issue. I think people, you can do what you want. See, once you're old enough, you can, can consent and you're not harming no one. Yeah. Then do what you want, but you know, in terms of sport, if it was boxing, like I am a cruiserweight male. If I like right, I'm identifying as a woman eh, and go and fight a cruiserweight woman, it <laughs> wouldn't be fair. So I am like it's yeah. harming their sport. Of course. So do what you want. And, and, and how I, would you I, feel then if the, if you were gonna have a fight and they said you have to fight this fella and the fella comes on and goes he, he used to be a woman. Yeah. Like I wouldn't feel would you feel comfortable with that? I don't know. I don't know. This is this is it's such a, like a touch like a sensitive issue. Like the way I feel, you yeah, can identify as whatever you want as long as you're not troubling no one. Yeah. But when it comes to sports, you know, if you're trans if you're a man who's transitioned to a woman or vice versa. Like if a woman transitions to a man like, she's not gonna friggin'. What's happening? Are we getting. Are we getting just says power off in five uh, minutes. It's all right. Though. I thought we were getting round down. I don't get shut down, cancelled. That's it, the But uh, no, I think, you know, for trans athletes, they should make a trans Saxon. You know, they have the Olympics and you have the Power Olympics. Then you could yeah. like, they have a trans thing, you know, which would be more for for everyone, like for women transitioning to men, like it wouldn't be for for that trans man to try and compete against, you know, a, yeah. a natural man. So you know, let the trans people have their own own yeah, setup. I think they're exactly the same thing. I thought if they're gonna have a thing, then have it as a trans league, yeah. you know, because I seen like um just to make it for course I seen um. I remember sport. What the beauty of sport is, it's a f equal playing field. So exactly. if you've, if you've, well, let's say you had me and you's boxing. You've done eight weeks. I have done eight weeks. So this is all we can do. This is as far as we can get. Yeah. So if somebody takes drugs, there's outrage because no, it wasn't fair. Yes. If somebody, it's like fucking the hundred meters. It's the most basic, basic. You know, contest that you do from your born a race you to the shop or a race you to the lamppost. So, a hundred meters, everyone they all have two legs, two arms. Everyone's one hundred percent healthy. They've been, they've had access. Well, they've had th enough time to train. So it comes down to how hard you've trained, yeah. or you know, it's all like a level playing field, and. If somebody gets done caught with juicing, they take the medals off them because yeah. it wasn't fair. Exactly. So if friggin... It's funny, that, like you said, I know what you're saying. So if they're taking juice, then they get their medals taken off them. So but if, yet, if you take loads of fucking juice and get your balls cut off and all the rest of it, it's all acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> Do like you know what I mean? It's like, fucking Because you identify as it. It's like... Yeah, and you're, it doesn't matter. Like you said, you can identify as whatever you want, but facts are still facts. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if you decided to identify as a fucking woman, your body is still a male. You know, yeah. all of your bone structure, everything to do yeah, with you yeah. is always still male, always will yeah. be. So when you throw a dig, doesn't matter if you try and take fucking estrogen or whatever, you're still back in a fucking yeah. powerful man's yeah. dig. You and know? Like, I, always, I think, you know, the running, running sports is the simplest way. You know, like, I so, saw... You know, like the trans athletes competing as women, they're always blitzing these the 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 natural women or just yeah. the kind of, even that that swimmer, like yeah, I've seen that they're just killing the game. So 
and it's fucking let them and go exactly. against people yeah, who's exactly. them. yeah and then set it up as their own wee fucking trans league in the, yeah. like the trans Olympics. and there's no like you know what I mean you know if somebody wins a Paralympics it's not less it's not look down upon like exactly. they're still getting you know yeah. the awards they're still getting you know the um British athletes they're getting MBEs and all that you know and you're recognised he's an Olympic champion like Megan McKillop is an Olympic champion but Paralympics but he's an Olympic gold medalist yeah. so if there was a trans league like you're saying or a trans Olympics you're still an Olympic champion he's a trans Olympic 100 metre champion but you're still the yeah. trans champion you're still Olympic champion I always thought that with the toilets too I think there should be trans toilets yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because I wouldn't like it's a bit mad imagine a man say, like just walking into the girls' toilet saying, No, I identify as a woman. You know no. what I mean? So let me in, I just haven't had my operation yet. Do you know what I mean? No, it's a bit fuck. Sure, there's a guy done that one that did you hear about him? He was like a rapist, he raped two and women or something. The, the, and then the he said zero. he identifies as a woman. Like, come on, bro, what that's the state of the fucking world right now. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So anyway though, you became a boxer, bro, and then you became the fucking European champ. Yeah, it was a long road. Like, <laughs> and then what happened then? No, just basically, um, I started boxing then when I was a kid, and you know we're talking about the Olympics. I never had any interest in the Olympics. I just wanted to. As soon as I turn eighteen, I'm gonna turn pro. That yeah. was my my thoughts, and then I was getting success. You know, I was an underage boxer and winning national titles and international titles and all that shit. And and then when I got the eighteen. I won a world bronze medal, so I was I got offered a contract to turn to turn pro, and I was like, yes, I'm ready to go. Yeah. But then, you like when you're twelve and you look at eighteen, you think eighteen's a fully grown man. Yeah. But then you get the eighteen, and it's not. You're still of course. So, so and especially I was a, a late heavyweight when I was eighteen, eighty one kilo. So I needed more. Like I hadn't filled out or anything. I still needed more time to develop and then I was on the, the high performance team the national team so then they like really drill in there at the Olympics this is what you want to do this is the be all and end all so then I kind of get sucked into the Olympic hip and then I was like fuck I want to go to the Olympics and then I never qualified and, and then I, t I turned pro and then that was it then I'm pro now still no, then, are you still pro now? yeah yeah so uh, it was but my pro career. It's so hard for Irish fighters because in England, there's like even though it's not that much bigger, but it's it's bigger. You know what yeah. I mean? So the every, there's so much stuff going on in England. So much uh, gyms, so much fighters, promoters, TV, everything's in England, and then America's the next level. Yeah, over here. The English promoters they don't need to come here. American promoters don't need to come here because they've got it all in their own country. Yeah. So the the level of coaching, the level of sparring, the level of everything in professional boxing in Ireland is subpar. Whereas amateur, cause like amateur boxing in Ireland's like top ten, or maybe top five. Yes. But they've put so much into the amateur scene, and there's not been much in the pro scene so we're so far behind so it was like it was a rocky road kind of um for me as a pro in the early years um still is now and then i managed you know my ascend with mark dunlap and mark he's a brilliant manager and a great fellow and he got me he got me uh a fight out in, in italy it was an opportunity and I was I was brought over as an opponent to get beat. This guy right. Fabio Tucci was seventeen and all, and he's like the face of Italian boxing. Right. So it was this big festival over there in in Trento, and like it was like a massive event, and uh, it, it was top of the bill. And I ran over and, and beat him, but I knew I was I knew I would beat him. Like, yeah. But yeah, I I had get beat yeah. before it. I had I had had two losses. So I was like, I was a credible opponent. Right. But I was like, nah, no, I ain't gonna fuck him. Now I threw everything in there for it. I was like, this is the last chance, because if I get beat here, then yeah. I'm gonna have to retire. Yes. So I went Same. on one net, won the WBC international title. So that gave me like a WBC world ranking. And then the next thing was for the European title. 
in a one net. But see, <laughs> yeah, see, after bro. after I won the WBC International, then COVID hit. Right. So oh, I, I was looking at fighting for the world title and all the terms, everything was agreed. The date, everything it was going to be Easter weekend. And then COVID hit, so that was, oh, everything sick. was fucked. Oh. So then I got the European title, won that. And that was no one of the behind closed doors shows, so I won the European title and then defended it and then fought in Annie Hearn's back garden, defended it again. But uh, the guy who fought, he was he was Commonwealth champion, I was European champion, and then we're fighting for the vacant British title. So that was all, no, the three titles. Yeah, fuck's sake. In the, in the back garden. So a loss, very controversial. I thought I won that fight, everyone thought I won that fight. But. He hairballed me, so he bust my album and it was got infected, so it was closed for like two weeks, like completely shut. My eye still isn't red, you know, it's still a bit smaller yeah. than the other one. Got like 20 stitches and I was out for months. But in the meantime, Fuck, he had like been fighting, had an act, got active and then I got a rematch of him again. And then he fucking, he stopped me in, so... It was, this was last year he stopped me round, coming up the the anniversary round now from that last fight and then that just put me at the bottom of the fucking pale line and I was like fuck's sake but if ah. once again not to make an excuse but you know you see guys they get beat and then they're back in the big fight but yeah. Irish fighters here you have to yeah you have to work your way work, up the so hard then, way after I got beat, I went to Estonia and had a fight in a wee small hall show. And then I fought again after that in Europa in a small hall show. And I was like, you know, for the last couple of years, I've been operating at the fucking upper echelons. I was closing in on the world title. Yeah. And now I'm back down here. Like, do I want to fucking Go claim this again? again? So it's, you know, sake, bro. I could not be fucking asked. You know what I mean? It's a nightmare. So it's... I was just, I'm just training, taking away, and then we're in negotiating for a world title again. And my hopes was up, and they were, I don't know if you've seen like all the stuff on on plan. It was like Tom McCarthy's fighting for the world title on the first of April, and everyone was texting me, "Congrats!" In there, I was going, "Fuck, that's looking good." And then it's not happening, obviously, because it's the first of April, but like next week. Of course, <laughs> fuck. And then, so it's just a nightmare. It's, it's a hard road. It's a hard, hard road boxing. And you know, if you wanna, if you're in it for money or like you're in the wrong yeah, game, you yeah. have to be in it for passion. You have to be in it. Yeah. And the money does come when you get there, but it's it's the yeah, long haul. Yeah, of course, bro. And like you said, not a lot of the time you'd have to be, you have to have a talent and a luck as well. Yeah, for it, yeah. Especially if you're not in one of the bigger places where yeah. it comes from, you know. So it's like the, it ha the stars do have their lane to for things to go right. And, you know, like you had Michael Conlon on, so me and Mick would be mates and we were on a national team together and, you know, Sick. lived with each other and it. And, um, like, what happened with him at the Olympics the second time we went and he got robbed, but that was actually a blessing because him cracking up in the ring saying, this yeah. is a fucking joke, this is corrupt, yeah. fuck everyone. I turned into a That made his time. profile huge. So then the, the Yanks come in was like, want to sign you and everyone and um, that made him like a star. Of course yeah. it did. Mickey said you were the one that showed him the music. Yeah, we were, <laughs> we were in, we were training because, like I say, I'm a, a music man to my, my core and um, I'm a rap I'm a hip hop friggin' fanatic too. Yeah. So I'm always like, always checking for new music and all this stuff. And um, I can't remember what year did that come out? Uh, Two thousand fourteen. They had the troubles. Was like, it? Yeah. No, I think that might have been before it. You know, yeah, I was born was, in Belfast. Yeah, that because that, that was the album. Two thousand fourteen. Yeah. So born in Belfast was like two thousand twelve. Yeah. yeah, about we we're done there anyway. And I don't know how I came across it on YouTube. Yeah, and um, and I was like, fuck, this is a, this is a bit mad. This song. Yeah, like, yeah. I was born in Belfast. <laughs> had a shotgun shell bath. I don't know if I like it or not. I don't yeah. know, but it's fucking. Yeah. I don't, I've never heard any Belfast rappers yeah, that yeah. I like. So then I started looking more into it. I was like, who the fuck is this song to you? Like, and then I started, you no, know, like, listening, I got other things for the songs. Yeah. And then 
the fire in the booth come on. But and this was because we used to be in Dublin Tuesday to Friday. So then over this would happen over the weekend, and then when we went back down, I was like, lads, did you ever hear a song? Has born a Belfast. Then we were all in the room, and then I was like, this is this fire in the booth, yeah. and then um, see at the start of your fire in the booth, you go, <laughs> yeah. Fire in a booth, boys. Yeah. And then, <laughs> <laughs> so then we were going up the Maynooth. Yeah. And uh, up to the college, and uh, before we ran up, and not like down south, they don't say their two hazes. Yeah. So we're like Maynooth. So we're like <laughs> going up the Maynooth for a week, has it? Fire in Maynooth, boys. <laughs> oh, fire in <laughs> and then uh, that was it. And then we, we have became yeah, the fucking cat's for a couple boys. of weeks. We got it for her minute, boys. <laughs> <laughs> and then we were just, and then we just kept playing. It. And then it was like, I was born in Belfast. Yeah. And we were, we were playing it all the time. And then because we were from Belfast in of Dublin, course. but the teams like from people all around the country. Sick. So that was our thing. And we just kept saying, I was born in Belfast. And, and then. And then it made like a resurgence a few years ago, like yeah. a couple of years after the fact. And I was like, fuck's sake, we've been listening to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did. My wee, it was my wee daughter. She came to me and says, Daddy, you're famous on TikTok. And Is that what like, happened, TikTok? Yeah, because yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah, I've never used TikTok, bro. I yeah, think that's, We have one for a podcast, Whiskey yeah. and Wait, by the way. Thanks to shit. Um, and. But Tyrone, he handles it. Cause I, yeah. TikTok, that's not for me. Nah, bro, I think grown men using TikTok's mm. a bit mad. Like I said, for podcasting, that, that's cool. And yeah, I'd get one from mine and yeah. shit, get someone to run it or something. But man, I wouldn't be using it. But um, we, Emily showed me. There's about fucking 10,000 kids all rapping. Yeah. I was born in Belfast, you know? Yeah. So, and like, but that's good. Like, of course it one. is. Nah, it is indeed, bro. It's funny shit. Oh. That. But I like that, bro. That's, um, like, it's mad because when I released that, um, I brought Charlie here first, brought him to Belfast. Yeah, because you know what? I, I remember I was walking through uh, Castle Court and I seen Charlie Soft sitting, having something to eat in a food court. And this is before, because he's very famous now, like, but yeah. this is like, we're talking 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I recognised him and I went up and speak, Charlie Soft, listen, proud to meet you. Um, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck are you doing in Belfast? Yeah. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't check in, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I have a speech. What are, you, what are you doing here? And he says, we're making a talk about you about yes. um, rappers in Ireland. Sick. And I was like, well, there's no good ones here. <laughs> and he was like, no, no, there's a couple sick ones. I was like, is it? And he's sick. like, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know what? That probably made sick. me go down to check out the Belfast rappers because, like, any Belfast rappers I've heard, they're trying to rap in American accents. Yeah. Or, like, I don't think the Belfast accent, you know, was like when they people were saying, like, I'm at that. Damn, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, fuck, yeah, yeah. like I know fuck's sake. Even, like, see, even when I went to Mosshead, like, the first day, um, Mar don't Morris core hardcore? I'm not sure. Well, he's like a lens runner chair at hardcore. Yeah. And he was looking at me. And I had my ca my cap on. I was wearing a tracksuit. And he was sitting in the chair and he was just looking at me. And he like, Why are you talking like that, bro? Because <laughs> that's where I talk. That's yeah. where I'm from. And I'm like, nah, man, nah. Uh, you can't talk like that, man. No. You look like you're from around here, but you're talking like that. And I'm, like, but I'm not from around here. <laughs> He's like, nah, okay. you're just gonna have to talk to me on part time, man. You uh, can't talk to me like that. Uh, but like, <laughs> you know, like, so I was going, fuck, you know, and it's like, it's not the fucking red kind of sound, no, like, yeah, you're yeah. Like, know Tom, you man, Tom, Tom, that's it, Tom. <laughs> but now, it with like true. Belfast, the rappers have been able to fan, can't summon them, yes. not like find the groove. Yeah. But that's what annoys me about Irish rap is now they're all rapping like they're from London. Yeah. No, like they're, they're drillers now. But like, if you're gonna rap and drill, do it in your own accent. Cause the number one rule in hip hop it's, is keep it real. real. That's of the, course, the, of course. But um, I was interviewing a couple of like the, the black Irish boys from down south, you it's know. All, it's all, it's, I hate to say it, I hate to say this, but. So all the black rappers are rapping with London accents. Yeah, but what I noticed is, what I learnt is as well, listening to them, that, that is their accent. They sort of have a bit of like a 
because the, the, he said like he, he grew up like speaking Jim, um, Nigerian, you know, yeah. it was like a Yoruba, Yoruba, a Yoruba, Yoruba. Yeah, yeah. and then he said it's like it was Irish was a second language, yeah. you know, and then like the blended in as well, you know. It's, it's just like obviously the things that are trendy. So right now, in urban culture, the the trend is you know like drill and Central C and this yeah. thing, all right. So this is. People want to be like them, so yeah, of course. they're going to, they're using that sound as a reference point, and then yeah. they think that sounds good. Or I want to do that, so I'm gonna instead of trying to do take the inspiration, I'm gonna just copy it. Yeah, and you know that's kind of the hundreds. way it was with English rap at the yes. start too, because they were like they all rapped in America. Listening, fuck yeah. the Americans. Yeah. I want to sound like it, so you know it, it, takes, it does take away the kind yeah, of fame. It's true. It was grime. Grime was like uh, England's own. Yeah, thing. That's, yeah. You know what I mean, and that's where it was like. And I remember back in the day, say like, oh, if you were doing like Eng like UK rap, like you said, you were trying to be like the Americans. Yeah. Whereas it was grime that grime was, was from England. Yeah, yeah. You know? So but I do like now that I'm shitting on them, but you know it's gonna take a it's gonna take time for people to find what, you know, find the right thing, like Graham, like, there needs to be, like, an Irish equivalent of Graham, like, this is our thing, I when you come to saying. Ireland, this yes. is how we... I know what you mean, like, that's what I was always trying to do, Maybe I, know, to do it, I so. always loved the, um, well, that's what my album was as well, I blended in, like, traditional Irish music with, like, the hip-hop yeah. beats and stuff, you know, and I was trying to tell stories, so it was yeah. all about, it was all authentic. Everything that I said in my album was 100% true. Yeah. And, like, it was, like, a burden released off me when I wrote it because mm. it was a true story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, when I'd done it then, I didn't really care about mm. sales or anything. There was no gimmicks just, involved. Yeah. But, um, but I do know what you're saying, 100%. Like, even, you know, when I was a kid, so... I was always back and forth to London, like I say. And, you know, the way the kids are talking now, you know, like, you hear kids saying, like, wah, guan, and ting, and, like, yeah. fucking... The, when I was a kid, no one would have... Like, if I had went and said wah, guan, to someone, they wouldn't have had a fucking clue what you're yeah. talking about. <laughs> and so now... he said that all the time, and man, You know what I mean, yeah? Because, like, man says it, like... Yeah. I always say it's more like the influence of Jamaica on the on the English, like um on England as a whole, like yeah. up and down England. That's all like, oh, no matter what your background is, that's how kids are greeting each other. Wah, wah, yeah, of course. Ting, listen, ev everything you know. Wee, like, listen to this. My wee daughter, she's just in first year of high school. She showed me all the wee boys in her um, year. And they're all like, you know, there's we Asian boys, we black lads, we boys, we white boys with glasses. Guess what they all do? All of them. They're all doing this. Yeah. <laughs> Got your fingers. Get, yeah, and they're both. One are, one yeah. other. Ba, ba. yeah, and they're all doing it every single one of them. I think it was. No, it's smart, but like that's it's and then, you know that probably obviously goes in the the rap thing too. Exactly. Yeah. They're just like I said, yeah. don't even know what it fucking means. They're yeah. just watching the, yeah, you know, yeah. the older ones doing it. But it is mad, bro, like the you know, so that's sick, bro. So, and then you do com comedy as well. Then. So, yeah, so I just started last July, July the 3rd, right? <laughs> I, I, I'll never forget that date. That's the first comedy show I've done. Sick. So, I did five minutes. And um, what happened was I was on a podcast talking about boxing yeah. with Sean Haggerty, and he's like a, like a top comedian over here. So, he says, do you want to do anything else at Taylor Boxing? And I was like, yeah, well, acting, rapping, music, anything. I smell even try stand up. He's like, if you're serious, I can get it sorted. Yeah. You can do five minutes on my show. And I went, yeah, fuck it. And then, so he, he was running a show up in Cold Island. Excuse me. And um, it was in a DAA club. So it, it had sold like, I think it was like near 200 people there. But it was like mad, but I had I had never even been to a comedy show before. I just watched it on TV, like but yeah. so I didn't know like the road that you have to go through. So apparently everyone's first comedy night is like an open magnet and there's like four or five people there and it's mostly your mates or whatever. 
But I, my first one was in this fucking mad GA club, and they're all blocked and being nuts. Right on five minutes, but everyone they get killed. So after Paddy McDonald brought me up, I travelled up with him, and he says, "Tommy, that was brilliant. Do you want to do it in the field?" And I went, "Why?" Well, so I had doing anything else, and then uh, <laughs> another comedian was on the show, Fenton Harvey. He was like, "Do you reckon you could do ten minutes on my show next month?" Or oh, I went. Or next week. And I was like, 10 minutes? Oh, I fuck it. And then, went well, up, done 10 minutes there, and it's just been rolling and rolling. And similar to how you're saying you wrote your album, all based off real stuff, and, you know, yeah. all my comedy stuff Comedy's is all, all, of that real. all, like, my life yeah. and real stories. And it's better, it's easier that way. Like, I'm not trying to, like, I'm not getting up and telling one liners I'm just telling stories, and then... Yeah, like, I don't even have to write it down because it's just the stories, stories in, in my head, mind. Obviously. And like, I can't, like, it's not like anyone can say, oh, you, he stole my bit or I had on exactly. that because it's, it's, it's my life. life. It's your life, yeah. of course. So, um, Sh Sean, what was he called? Sean Haggerty? Sean Haggerty, yeah. Yeah, is his wife a comedian? Fiona, yeah, yeah. She yeah. messaged me. She wanted me to go on, go on her hers. podcast. Yeah, yeah. But um, I booked in to do it, but then it yes, slipped I've got in. my own. So. I slept in, bro. I'm still waiting on her to show me back. I said, oh, I'm sorry. They probably you know. bought <laughs> I'm telling you, I says, come on now. I said, Let's see all them comedians, bro. Shane Todd's the same. When I went on his show, he was like, yeah, will you come in at um, 10 a.m.? And I was thinking, 10 a.m.? Do you sleep in? Yeah, I don't know, but I struggle. Oh, it's my, do, it's my girlfriend's fault. I do wake up. I try and wake up early, but she likes to sleep in. Like, what about, you know? um, does your daughter live with you? Nah, not no, now. Nah. I, right, I, have her, I have my daughter every um, half term. That's why I sleep in? Exactly, That's bro. Sick. Shit, uh, <laughs> I'm, nah. I'm up for you. You're right, but my daughter's with me. She's in at the crack of dawn, yeah. obviously, bro. Now I only have my daughter at half terms, so like I have her at Christmas. So you can she can sleep in as well. Yeah, exactly, yeah. she does. She loves the day. She's like her daddy. The dad she's a night owl as well. She loves staying yeah. up at the night. What about the is your um, daughter in the rap? Yeah, um, my daughter released a, I released a song with her. There is she Christmas. Long? No, she sings in it. Is she but um, she likes yeah, yeah, she sings me. I'll show it. It's called The Snowman. She showed it to all her wee mates. And then I went in to pick her up and all her wee mates wanted autographs yeah. and all, you Brilliant. know. Yeah, but um right. she's dead proud of it, like, you know, I made her a couple of wee raps. I wrote a rap all about her. And then um, she knows it word for word. Yeah. It's like she so memorized it. Perform it with all cue. Yeah, and she's very musical. She knows like she could probably off the top of her head, she'll know like the lyrics to over a hundred songs. Mm. And they're all different genres yeah. from Sam Cooke songs. I sung her Sam Cooke when she was Which a weekend. Is, yeah. and me and her singing Lonely Island yeah. together and she knows all the so words. I had actually seen a clip of you singing like Singing and playing guitar. Yeah, I don't yeah. even know what genre you would call it. I was going to say yeah, it's rock, Irish but as well, rock or it's Irish. not really yeah. rock. Like, but yeah, there was a um, yeah. My mate Declan, he plays the guitar. I don't play the guitar. He plays it, and I would sing. Really? But I sing like Irish ballads yeah. as well. Never, you know. I did like doing the singing. I only started that when the. When I was in Spain, started like karaoke. Yeah, yeah. And then I thought, nah, I like Fuck this. Me, yeah. And I'm getting older now, so I'm not going to be doing the rap forever, you know? And I think I just, I like singing yeah. as well. I see, like, for you to. Are you saying there anything? Nah, but I would never get signed. Yeah, yeah, it's independent. Everything's always been independent, never been signed, yeah. ever. So, yeah. like, has it been like a rocky road to get. Because obviously, like, you're the premier. Belfast ever who else is there? Yeah, no, no, there wasn't anyone like when I started. Is there any now? I yeah, don't want to sit on we, uh, kneecap are doing really Oh fuck, well. kneecap, kneecap or, are doing brilliant. Yeah. You know, and then like, you know what? Like that's what kneecap is like you know what I was saying, the Belfast accent they always like I was going to one so I think kneecap the flow's perfect, yeah. everything's perfect and yeah. it's like um keeping it real. Like Yes. Even like the, the even if it is like a persona 
Yeah, it's still it's authentic. like relatable, yeah, like it's, it's authentic. authentic. Yeah. And they're very skilled at yeah, they, they, and I they, love the way they rap in Irish they, as well. Yeah, in so and out, it's fucking and unreal. It, like yeah, I, I do love the kneecap boys and I think what they've done is sick. They have become they're huge, like you know, like when I came out, like I said, it was more about just my story and mm. and that was it, you know yeah. what I mean? It was like they've went far with it as yes. a crew. And you have to remember, see with me. I didn't have like a DJ. Yeah. I didn't have a good cameraman. Yeah, you, you get me. I was just out on my own here. Like, you know? Even like kneecap is like authentic old school like hip hop kind of. Yeah. You know, two rappers and, and a DJ. DJ. You get me. It's bro. like and fucking. That's how it is. I'm one of the worst. The, the yeah, fucking yeah. Bally and, all. and they're all sons. Fucking. Yeah, they are. They're good lads. But it's like, like that. I don't get it. That though is like pure hip hop. Yeah. Uh, keeping it real, rapping in their own accent. The lyrics are good, the flow's good, the DJs are, yeah. and like you say, a rap crew. They are, it's good. I would say they've smashed it, you know, and I am proud of that. And then there's like, you know... The Fallon Master, I've seen him on this. Who? Sean Paul, SP, Free the World. Oh, SP Morris? Sean Paul Morris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing well. Yeah, he's doing well. And do you spit yourself, bro? Do you know what? Not, uh, not like... Pursuing it, but like, I'm like, like I said, from a musical family, and I was always writing bars now, like yeah. when I'm bored and doing yeah, stuff. Yeah. And then I've a couple of times down in Filthies, yeah, to have I think it's is it Monday night to have like over mic, right? And then I got <laughs> up a couple of times, he's like, Oh, let me put was junk, start rapping, yes, bro. So, uh, did you hear Anthony Josh here rapping? Yeah, he's funny, isn't he? It's funny. But uh, I actually, I fancy, I used to have this, I was say, I fancy myself as a rapper. I am the self self proclaimed best rapper who doesn't rap. Damn That's who I am. Listen, my brother's like that too. I would never want a freestyle battle, my brother would probably want me like that. Like, see, fucking. I've rocked the house in Filthies a couple of times. Yeah, can I imagine. <laughs> and, like, and then. Are you going to freestyle him? Do you know what? I, in my car, I think I am. Go <laughs> like a table. Because I always know, like, download instrumentals, know any songs I like, like, fucking in when I'm driving. I used to train in Dublin, and at the start, I used to drive up and down every day. So I used to, like, for the two hours, whatever it is, just, like, be, some days I would just rap the whole way down or rap along the mount, the like songs people who are like what's on is be like wait I'm gonna make up my own yeah. own raps here. <laughs> but now nah, it's, it's a hard it's a hard game. Sick. And then what about the the podcast? How did you get into setting up your podcast? Uh it was it was all Tyrone's idea. So Tyrone McKenna, that's he's my best mate like, in real life from yeah. when he was twelve. Um and Godfather, one of his kids, he's Godfather, one of my kids, best mom Jeez, in each shit. other's wedding, all like proper brothers. And um, he kept saying, we need to do a podcast. We should do a podcast. Because me and him, he's crazy. Yeah. But me and him have like a crazy life, kind of. Not that I'm trying to like fucking, man, we're all nuts. But we've had so many like mad yeah, experiences. Man, yeah. And he's he's nuts. And like I say, like we're like yin and yang, so like we're so different, but you know, like it makes it the perfect thing. Of like, yeah, man. And um, so he's like, we we should make a podcast because we have so much like stuff we could talk about and all that there. And I kept saying, yeah, yeah, let's do it. And then I never made any moves. And then he was like, you're a fucking tire kicker. Fuck sake, you never gonna do this for months. Yeah. And I said, wait, fuck it. So I reached out to uh, Paddy McDonald and asked him, how do you do it? He put me on to his brother and then we've we done it. And Paddy was the first guest. Jeez, I was like, fuck, shit. this is good. This is actually good. Yeah, and then man. it got good feedback and then it's just, we're just enjoying it. Then it's good. You know, yeah. like, it's not forced or anything because it's me and him just grew up together. It's we're, we're two genuine friends and it's like, it's sit there and it's almost like a, you, a therapy you can shut out the rest of the world and no whatever's going on in your day and then you can come and sit and talk and then like have a laugh it's no, good like, it. so sick bro and then we just had 
We had um a live show on Friday. Yeah, I seen that at the Devon. At the Devon, yeah. so lit and it was just packed. It was great. So we're gonna do another one in the summer and set up a website, um, whiskeyandweight dot com. Shameless Sick. plug. So. Nah, damn right. <laughs> and uh, that. merchandise and all that. So we're going all in. Of we're going all in. I love that, yeah. bro. I love that. And that's what it is. Then why is it called whiskey and white? It's up the interpretation. <laughs> 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 There's another thing. Really? Right. So whiskey and white. We were calling ourselves that for years because like, I'm whiskey colored and I he's white. That. I thought that. And then yeah. people were going like, is it cause whiskey and cocaine? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I say, like, well, yeah, you can whiskey, say it like that if you want. I'm fucking whiskey, you know, it melts you out, make you confident, and you know, yes. like, when then cocaine makes people weak fucking mad. Yeah. So Tyrone's fucking, he's the cocaine the and the whiskey. Yeah, the whiskey gangster shit. No, I like it. It's actually a good name. It's got a good ring to it as yeah. well. Yeah, and then like, he, used to, and he used to live in America. He was boxing over there. Right. It's well, is he a boxer too? He's a, yeah, he's a professional boxer as well. Right, wow, okay. So he's been in some like massive fights and he so I was based in Manchester and then he was based in America. He actually done two stints in America. So right. the first one, he turned pro over there. He went to New Jersey. Sick. He went on a, a trip, a, an amateur trip, and then the coach was like, Hey, yeah, you wanna come over and blah blah blah. So he went over, had a couple of fights. And then he came home, got his girl pregnant, and then so he was stuck home then, and then <laughs> stuck <laughs> home then, fucking. <laughs> and then uh, he went, he got another opportunity to go out to Philadelphia. Right. So wow. he went back out there and he was living there for a while, and then he came home, got her pregnant again, and that was him home again. And, uh, and then he's based just at home, but uh, when he was in America, he was going, no, like going to the bars and people were getting whiskey and lemonade and they were going, get a whiskey and white. Yeah, So yeah, yeah. he was saying that when he come home. Sick, whiskey and white. Love it, bro. And you've done like fucking 29 episodes. 29 right? episodes. So we do what every week. We will do it once a week. comes out every Wednesday on all streaming platforms. So let's cross over. And if you're watching this one, watch my one. Subscribe. Damn right, 100 if, fucking percent. So we're just trying to grow it and, you know, Keep it real, you know, like I've said a couple of times, this, I'm a hip hop baby, you know, I grew up when hip hop was, became the popular culture. Of course. So, keeping it real is like, I'm fucking trying, you know, that's like ingrained into me for, through myself, like. Yeah, man, I can and see And so, that. everything is like, all, trying to keep everything authentic, and, um. As we try to do on the podcast as well, keep everything real life. Yeah, I love yeah. that, bro. I see that in it as well. I see that even um, the skit that Buzz showed me. Um, we were just talking about the fucking the, <laughs> the two fellas who pulled up saying, Yeah, after any time. Uh, yeah, you, and yeah. then you asked them for a lift, and, I was like, <laughs> and then you said they were two maniacs. And I was thinking, you know, You're the fucking real maniac getting in the car with them for fucking. Well, was, they're two young guys, but you, you know, like. And, in West Belfast, I feel like you were saying, like in in Moss Head, yeah. it's mad, but you felt so comfortable. Exactly. That's where I feel too. Like people from outside uh, West Belfast, fucking yeah. awful not kids, but I feel comfortable Obviously, because, because it's, it's my people. Up, right? it is, Moss Head, that's your people. Yeah. Like even like when I was there, I felt safe in Moss Head because they're course, all nice. Obviously, but these guys pulled up and he's like, eh. Hey. <laughs> Try to. <laughs> <It's like, laughs> nah, but you can make up something like that. <laughs> yeah, you mean. Really Later, yeah. Like, well, what? She said, ah, it's Tommy McCarvey. <laughs> she said, all right, go ahead. And it was like, go take a tip, take a tip. It's going, no, you're all right. <laughs> you could have been fucking at it. Go, go ahead. <laughs> What happens when a car stays in a car? And I think, lads, doesn't just <laughs> oh, sprint, drop me laugh. home and I sit there. I know, he's like, for fuck's sake, bro. Gee, shit, brother. Nah, I want to come and see one of your podcasts live as yeah. well. That looks so the sick. next the next day, one, we haven't got a date, but it's going to be in the summer. So we're, we're, we're going to try and do three, maybe sick. four a year, because you couldn't, you couldn't do, like, fucking every week, like, 
Nah, People will get sick of it. Nah, of course you want to keep them yeah, like a keep nice spectacle, yeah. definitely, bro. But I love that, bro. What about, have you any shows coming up? Are you doing shows? Yeah, yeah, we've got like, I don't like to say them and then they don't fucking like, jinx yeah. them or something, but we've got some big shows lined up looking at um, Bugsy Malone as well. Yeah. So he's coming to Belfast. Do you know him? Yeah, well, I've met him. There. I've met him like once and when he was coming up, I was, there was only like two rappers from Manchester to do a fire in the booth and I was like one of them yeah. so then I seen that Bugsy was doing his was fire he the, the other booth. one? no he I had done mine before Bugsy right. who was the other? Um, there was Hoodman yeah and he's Tyler Daly Tyler Daly the you best. know Tyler Daly you know he's what? a G Children of Zeus Children they're coming of Zeus here and fucking forget what the date is but that's my friggin that's yeah, my favourite group now the sick, minute, is yeah. it bro that's yeah. G shit so I, I, like, I know Tyler Daly like from when he was hurt man yeah, yeah. yeah of course I've known Jermaine, him Jermaine that's yeah. what put me on Jermaine, the day sick that's yeah when he sings it song, Jermaine yeah. yeah he's done a lot of good shit it was used to be hurt man and Lyrican yeah they, they used to do it together yeah. you know and he could rap as well I know Tyler yeah, Daly is like a, like a bad boy singer but like rapping he's like his lyrics is yeah he label. was sick bro he was sick and um no he was really good at rapping he was yeah. very underrated he still like. does spit sometimes with children yeah. of zeus but yeah connie Collins the one yeah who's, you and know. i knew connie con so when i got kicked out of trinity um in the i'm set, talking like like as if i know them nah, <laughs> i just listened to them on them nah, but it's jesus <laughs> bro because like you said they are like manchester um like legends yeah, you know and yeah. like when i went to when I got kicked out of school, then I went to Longside Adventure Playground, and there was a guy called Gwen in there, or Gwyn, and he um, he DJed with Skull Snap Records with Connie Khan, and um, that's a, they yeah. were in broken English yeah, then. Yeah. But I'm good mates with um, DRS as well. Red, yeah. You know DRS, yeah, don't you? From bro and Strategy, Strategy's yeah. sick. I'd say when it comes to the old school. No one could yeah. fuck with strategy. Yeah, yeah. His lyrics and all and his flow, he's sick, bro. Yeah. Have you heard strategy's new shit? Nah, I haven't, you know. But it's so I too just cold. see what I was saying about Belfast rapping. I felt that way about Manchester rappers as well. Yeah. It's like that accent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's right. Yeah. And then not until I was like staying there, then I started getting in the Manchester rapping and I was yeah. like, fuck this, Etsy does sound. Yeah, there's a, there's a, I know what you're saying, like I felt the same as Manchester, uh, the same as, but like when it was coming up, I used to think, nah, I'm not feeling this. Because you just think, I... like, American and London, that's all, like, the, yeah. but then, it's like, then when you go and you're around Manchester and you're like, fuck, it actually does sound good. And then, yeah. uh, like, Belfast, it does did, sound good. Did you never hear, no, uh, did you ever hear of the Urban Knights in Manchester? No. Nah. Meany. Nah. You never hear him? He was sick, bro. He was like fucking, like the Eminem in Manchester when he yeah. was ghetto. He's from Levenshoom. Yeah. And he yeah, was raw, know. bro. He was raw. And then there was, like, Shifty. Remember Shifty? Yeah. There was Shifty and fucking Hoodman then. Um, yeah, they became Children of Zeus, um, Broken English, Virus Syndicate. Remember the Virus Syndicate? No, I don't, I don't the Tom Piper, what about Tom Piper? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's like a drum and bass MC. Yeah. Yeah. See, like, in drum and bass as well, like, I'm not really a drum and bass guy, but. What about jungle? Trigger? I what like about jungle? Trigger? Do you know Trigger? Trigger? Man, man, he got his eyes yeah, shut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, he's a bit of mine as well. But I've done a song with him. Did he? Called No Blacks, No Irish. Have you got any um, features on. The album? Oh, on on the Troubles album. Yeah. Just um one wee feature with of like a um he was like an Irish singer. I didn't want any on um on the actual album because mm. I wanted to keep it all about yeah, my family. Yeah. So I've got like my wee sister singing on the album. I've got like all my uncles playing all the traditional Irish yeah. instruments and a sample my dad speaking. Yeah. So it was a family oriented yeah, yeah. album. That's probably it. Yeah, you know? Matter, yeah. But I've done loads of like features and all like um Shoddy Horror done a song yeah. with him. You know Shoddy Horror? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the battle rapper from Manchester. Yeah. See Do you ever do battle rap? That's what I was gonna say. We were known as like the original battle rappers, like I um before Don't Flop and all started, I was going out and like battling people in the streets and all and filming it yeah. you know and then they said we well, heard you're the guy from Manchester to battle but I took it all personally mm. someone disrespected my mum or something bro you smacking I mean, it wouldn't be rap I mean, no. it's a rap battle I couldn't handle it it's the truth bro I couldn't handle it so 
and it wasn't for me. And I always thought music, like you said, there's no gimmicks involved. I'm not going to talk about nothing that I wouldn't do. Anything mm. that I say, like I've always done, and I've yeah. uh, back it. I think that's I mean? like, because I went through a wild phase of just like watching battle rap for ages, and then they're all like, yeah, I'm going to get the clack and I'll yeah. let you tap off, and everyone's getting shot and raping yeah. everyone. Yeah. But obviously, it's like all it's just. It's um, of them, yeah. course. And like, some people had a, somebody like you, and even like me, like you were going, I can't say it because I wouldn't do it, yeah. but really, it's, you can't say it because it's not, yeah. it's just a performance. Yeah, exactly. But I don't know, it's like, whenever I'm talking about doing madness or something, it's because there was times in my life it, I yeah, was doing yeah. mad shit, you know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah. doing crazy shit. Like, yeah. thank God I was arrested <laughs> for the rest of my life. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, it is hyped. Obviously, because when you're talking about it, you're sort of thinking about what you would do as well as mm. what you've done. Do you understand mm. what I mean? And then yeah. it's like, um, I always use music as like a tool to express whatever I'm feeling. So if I was feeling like upset and um, about a, a death or even like in love with a girl or anything, you just you, you yeah. force channel it all into yeah. that. And then it all just turns out what it is. You don't even know what you're going to mm. do. I just start rapping and then see where it leads. You know yeah. what I mean? It is deep, bro. It is deep. But um, we could talk all day, bro. I know. We'll have to wrap it up, my bro. But um, I've got some edibles here too, brought in. Do you not take the edibles? No, fuck, I'll give them a word. <laughs> yeah, man, it's the John Sue bar from Mix Weedy Wonka. Mix up, I'm telling you, and Buzz like you, all the lads. But listen, bro. Yes, thanks for having me. Yes, I enjoyed it, yes. Thank you, my bro. I've, I've, do you know what? We've been listening, we've been saying fire in the booth for fucking 10 yeah, fire years. Fire in the nook. <laughs> fire in my head, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, much love. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks Death again. Yeah, yeah. Respect, bro.